and welcome to the Boss Up Ball Out Podcast, your home for organic debate about our favorite team, the Detroit Lions. It's your man, Kurt Steele. Man, it is Victory Monday. In today's show, we recap Arr. the Lions' 26-20 overtime victory over the L.A. Rams on Sunday Night Football. But please do us a favor. Like the video and share it with other Lions fans like yourself. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 2,000 subscribers, and we are currently at 1851. Now it's time to bring in my co-host, man. Y'all know who it is. It's the hardest working man in Jackson, Michigan. That brother got like six jobs, man. It's the Wolf of Lion who? I'm still hitting that victory Monday seawalk. Like that right there. <laughs> Mike, Coach Mike Jones, what's going on, Lion fans? Man, <laughs> y'all know who it is, man. It's the biggest player from the Himalayas. Yak time, no back down. My man, LL Cool Chance. What's going on, my guy? What's up, everybody? Happy Victory Monday. Man, if you are guys are new to the channel and you don't know how our show works, we look at Detroit Lions news, headlines, and takes. If we agree, we say they are bossed up. If we disagree, we say they are balled on. We give our take on why we agree or disagree. No hot takes here, baby. Just natural debate mm-hmm. and our true thoughts and opinions about what's going on with our favorite team, the D. Detroit Lions. Man, victory Monday, man. Let's get into what we're going to talk about on today's show. We're going to look at the Lions offense and how they play versus the Rams and their defense. And then we're going to give our boss up, balled out, and balled on players of the game. But first up in the shoot, my man LL going to recap what happened on the offensive side of the ball. What you got, my man? Man, man, man. Um, my dog Kurt, you kind of said it just a few seconds ago as we were getting ready. So it just looked uh there was a lot of rust. And yeah, you could tell that, you know, players didn't play um in the preseason, you know, um all over the place. Um offensive line, you know, uh skill or position players, all that other stuff, wide receivers, all that stuff. But I mean, you know, they look decent at times. Um I believe that at sometimes maybe uh you know, the Rams defense had figured them out because you saw uh, 33, I mean, excuse me, 43. I think it was John Johnson. He was calling it out, and that was the gentleman who had got that pick. But, um, you know, whatever. Um, they blanketed St. Brown, so they so we were forced to use other targets. Um, they also um, tried to cover up um, Laporta as well. Um, they limited, though, they limited those two to um, St. Brown finished with um, three catches for 13 yards and Sam LaPorta four for 45 yards. So um, Sam LaPorta's numbers aren't necessarily the worst, but St. Brown's are definitely like, whoa, what happened? But if you watch the game, you know exactly what happened. Um, um, eventually, they were able to run uh, J-Mo off of some of that stuff. You know, we got to see him uh, late in the game with that, uh, took that like slant or drag kind of deep. Uh, we got to see J-Mo get off. He, got, he took the long bomb. He got the, uh, you know, the end around and things like that. Um, before y'all want to say, oh, no, uh, Jared Goff threw him the ball. Yeah, it was short, and he had to turn around and stop and wait on him and pull out the sunglasses and make a Facebook post before the ball got there. So, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, um, a lot of penalties, a lot of stuff to clean up, a lot of stuff to clean up. Um, but and I, and I trust that they will. I trust that they will. Um, one thing that I will want to say um, is uh, y'all's friend, Jared Eugene Ulysses Goff, in that uh in that in that post game con uh in that post game um uh interview thing whatever it is uh press conference he was up there sounding all nonchalant and everything man I need him to put some more chalant in his voice man you need, you need to act like you was uh or, or act better than um, than you was out there about to get a game away but um um just to speak back on I guess uh like what what who the Lions named the player of the game offensive player of the game was our friend Jamison Williams he finished with five catches 143 total yards. And one touchdown. He had the 52-yard um, touchdown bomb from Jared Goff. Um, one person that I want to shout out as well is my friend, um, if y'all are familiar with uh, Peyton Fool, money-making Mitch. This is my guy, my man, Monty. I don't understand why we got away from him, but as soon as we put him back in there, or as soon as we started handing him the ball some more, he took right on off. I kind of thought he was hurt or something. I think I might. I don't know if I asked that in the, in the chat with us, but I for sure asked it. Um, you know, to other people like his money hurt or something like that was going on. But, um, you know, uh, we ended up getting to overtime. And in overtime, Monty was the man. He had five carries for 45 yards in that, um, in that overtime and that touchdown. 
So um, offensively, again, we looked uh, very, very, very rusty. I believe, you know, we will look a whole lot better. Um, I'm not mad at the uh, performance overall except for, you know, one person. But, you know, we'll we talk about that. We'll get into that. Y'all already know who that is. But what do you guys think about that offense from last night? All right, man. Uh, I'm I, I'm gonna go first, dude. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Coach Jones get his coffee in the rack quick. I'm gonna say your takes a boss up. Of course, man. You know it is what it is. We we kind of agree on that one. That rust was just you can see on both teams, but you can definitely see on our offense, man. It was just rusty. Um, but Ben Johnson's play calling had me kind of scratching my head, man. That mm-hmm. Rams young defensive front, they're not as as good against the run as they were last year. Of course, missing Aaron Donald, they're not going to be. Montgomery started the game off good, and next, you know, they went away from him. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Like, that was supposed to be our tone setter for the whole game, and they just kind of went away from it, and we tried to get a little cutesy, passing the ball across the middle, and those Rams was having none of that crap, man. That that new defensive coordinator must look at the tape from the wild card mm-hmm. game. They said, you are not, we're not going to let St. Brown and Laporta eat. But all the work that J Mo put in paid off, man. He was crisp. He had a lot of speed. Leaving guys, man, that double move was bananas. Mm-hmm. What? Your Davis White looked like a rookie. <laughs> I was like, he was on the sideline mad. You saw if you see that mm-hmm. the, after that play, he was looking distraught. But um, I just think that when the Detroit needed to do this, and I was listening to uh, the nightcap with uh, with uh, Shay Shay and and uh, Ocho. Detroit, when they need to impose their will in overtime, Demo but got behind that offensive line, the best in the league in overtime, man, and got disrespectful. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was straight disrespect. They just ran the ball down their throat, and I think the game would have been. Would not have been close if they had done that earlier. But shout out to uh um J Mo and D Mo for doing their thing. Now, I will tell you this, even though he sounded nonchalantly in the press conference, I, I watched JG's presser. He said, he said, I threw an interception, and I almost threw another one. He admitted his mistakes. He just didn't say it with, I guess, enough mm-hmm. gumption for LL. But mm-hmm. what you got, Coach Jones? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what, man? <laughs> You can you can honestly see the rust. Um, that's probably something we're gonna have to get used to when people uh, are sitting out preseason games. Um, you know, usually that you know usually usually goes a second and third preseason game is like the dress rehearsal where the starters play a whole half of football, and then they just, then they sit out that fourth game. But now that there's three games in the preseason, uh, a lot of people don't want to play, and that that rush shows. But luckily for the Detroit Lions, we got off to a quick start. Um, and uh, J-Mo, man, that who man, that boy fast. Um, he he actually could have made a couple more catches in that game too, man. But uh, J-Mo definitely did his J-Mo thing. He he way more from now on, man. He he's mm-hmm. doing his thing, man. And and the only the only thing is that I have a question is. Ben Johnson, stick with the run, man. Uh, you did this last year after we played the Chargers where you just went away from our identity, and we pound the rock, bro. And, um, you know, so we pound the rock with, with Montgomery, and we use Gibbs as as a um, as a kind of a, a swing guy. You know what I'm saying? You don't know where Gibbs is going to line up. So keep it like that, man, and stop going away from Montgomery because – like like they said in, in the pressers, man, he's had the best camp. Uh probably anybody on mm-hmm. offense, man. Stop playing with that man, man. You brought him to Detroit for a reason, and he showed it yesterday, man. Definitely. Hey, like the video, share the video, and comment on the video. All these things help us get this content to more Detroit Lions fans just like yourself. All right, man. Talk talk about coach jones favorite topic the defense man what you got coach jones man um you know what first i just want to say uh the corner is a little too touchy feely because uh, you know what i'm saying that mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that they little they like to, they like to put their hands on people a little bit too much you know how nfl 
you know, their offense. They're all offense. So y'all can get every flag. And I think Sub Zero kind of understood you can't do what you did in college because we don't we don't play that on the receivers, man. You can't touch no offensive weapons uh, in the league. So <laughs> that's, that's just the way it is. But um, luckily, I'm I'm just going to be honest and say, luckily for us, uh, Pook and Nakua went down um, because – I mm. feel like if Nakua would would have uh, been out there too. Oh, we it might have been. I don't know, man. Um, but luckily, Stafford didn't play at all in the preseason, so he was just as rusty as we were, even rustier than we were. Um, but he got cooking in the second half. Um, he got cooking. But I want to say that D line, man, y'all held it down, man, because I believe. I believe they had uh, – I believe that Lee Rusher had 50-something yards rushing. I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Kyron Williams, I believe he had 50 – Yeah, 50 on the nose. Yeah, 50 on the nose. So, uh, we were solid against the run again. We wasn't giving up Nathan. And uh, I, I'm, that's good, man. But uh, one thing I just got to say is Levi Anzarika played a whole game, man. <laughs> that boy back, man. That man, that man was out there doing his thing, and I didn't see no, I didn't, ah, ah, I didn't see no, none of that, man. So I'm, I'm <laughs> proud of Levi, man. He put, he played a, a whole game. Only question I got on defense is, is the pass rush. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, he, he, he basically had that, uh, that last drive from the Rams. He basically stopped that. Um. By himself, man. Uh, they got the pass interference, or not, or the holding call, and um, then uh, he got the sack. And hey, Hutchinson, that 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 man is a man on the mission, man. And um, I like that, man. I like that a whole lot, man. Hutchie Hutch is coming. He coming for somebody. But mm-hmm. um, I, I just think overall in the defense, we played a good game. Like I said, it got a little bit, you know, a little loose in the second in the, in the second half, but. I mean, it's to be expected when you got a high power offense like the Rams got and a veteran quarterback like Stafford. But overall, man, I'm not, um, I'm not mad with the defense. Did they? They gave up three points in the first, zero points in the second, uh, seven points, uh, and then ten points in the fourth, and that was it, man. And um, hey, man, week week one, I take it. Yeah, definitely. I, I, the the defense, you could tell that Russ was there on that side of the ball too. Um, and the, one of the things was that for me, even though they, they played better than last year's group, that communication in the secondary was lacking. Now, it wasn't completely their fault because what Stafford and McVay did, they used those multiple pre-snap motions to get players in spots to succeed. And the when they went when the Lions went to a more of a zone, it hurt them because mm-hmm. They were they were played better in man, and when they were just switching off, um, it was better for them. Now, when they went to zone, Stafford was eating them up. Now that front front seven kept pressure on Stafford um, when they could to you know to get to him. Ag didn't blitz Stafford, and I understand why because guess who's deadly against the blitz? Stafford will eat you alive if you blitz him. That's just how he is. I mean, we know that from being in Detroit. So. Um, I just think that the secondary will improve, man. I, you know, um, they didn't play together, so they're going to progress. I just think they just got to get, you know, playing together and they'll be all right. Um, cause that boy, Brian Branch was making some plays all over the mm-hmm. field. That, that dude was doing his mm-hmm. thing. Sub zero played okay in spots, man, but you get a healthy Cooper cup. He's a hard cover for anybody, especially a rookie. Cause cup had him in the blender <laughs> a couple of times. Um, but uh, because he got those couple of PIs down in the red zone, yeah, it happens for a rookie. But one guy got a I got a shout out, man. Marcus Davenport. What yeah. that dude <laughs> is if he can stay healthy and he and Hutch are gonna be a problem this season because you're gonna turn one way and see Hutch, and you're gonna turn the other way and see Davenport because his bull rush was on point. Last man. Night, man, definitely he was doing his <laughs> thing, man. What you got, LL? <laughs> Um, yeah, Davenport was looking, um, you know, he was looking healthy, man, looking healthy and strong, man. Shout out to him. Um, um, I would like to see, even though they had a banged up offensive line and things like that, I would like to see Davenport and Hutch and everybody in this pass rush. 
against a less savvy quarterback and head coach. You know what I'm saying? So who who we got next week? Um, I looked at it. Too. Who we got next week? Um, Tampa. Tampa. Baker, Baker. Uh, not not to put it on them, but you know what I'm saying. You know Baker is not Matthew Stafford at all. So I would just like to see that against the, um, you know, like I said, a less savvy quarterback because I think that maybe some um, things would be able to be made. Because yeah, they was all, of course like, we see that we see that we saw that a lot last year. They were almost there, almost there, almost there, but looked at just a little bit different last night. I was, um, um, you know, um, excited to see that um, Dan Campbell said it himself. That, um, that Stafford knew exactly what to do and where to go with the ball. So that's why I say that. I just want to see them against a, a little bit less savvy, um, you know, offensive uh, um, leaders to see if we, what we can get done against that. Um, they allowed a couple big plays um, due to missed tackles. I expect for that to be cleaned up. But other than that, it was, you know, coverage-wise and everything like that, it was decent. Um, we keep talking about sub-zero, sub-zero. I think he had a decent game, especially for a rookie. Yeah, he had those penalties. I ain't too mad at it. But Ennis Rakestraw got in there, and when he did, he every play I believe every play he played on was a good play. Um, the good defensive play. He, I want to say he had maybe uh, two tackles at least. But he I saw that fifteen flashing around up there. Um, one thing that I do want to say, um, I think the NFL may and I said this about the, um, the O line injuries and things like that. I believe that the NFL the NFL may have felt bad for LA in their offensive situation because they let them dudes hold the whole night. So that might be another reason why they were almost there because they was getting held. Uh, they was doing Hutch wrong the entire night. He was getting spent around hell from the back, pushed down, all that kind of stuff. They tackled him on work. Uh, my man, like, clipped him and took his whole legs out. He right, landed all sideways and stuff like that. Um, it, it was bad all night. The, offensive, um, the refs let them get away with a whole lot. But um, maybe we'll see a, a different pass rush next game. Yeah, that was a clipping penalty. It was a McLeod? He just stuck his leg out, yeah. like tri- like tripping. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, ref, what, what are you? What are y'all doing, man? I, I feel exactly what you're sure. saying, my dude. Uh, I get exactly, definitely what you're saying. Hey, like the video, share the video, and comment on the video, man. We appreciate you right here on the Boss Up Ball Out Podcast. We do this content for you, man. And shout out to my man Brian Stover coming. He hit me up on Facebook this weekend, man. You know, he's over from Detroit Lions on the Prowl days. Man, but all the all the people coming back, I appreciate you, man. We appreciate you right here on the show. And the for our, our new family, man, especially the new crew coming over from Lions Talk, Lions Talk Live, thank you for tuning in right here at the Boss Up All Live podcast, man. We definitely uh, appreciate you. It's all love. Now it's time to get in to our Boss Up Ball Out players of the game. All right, of course, offense, man, J-Mo. That dude, Waymo, was killing it right there, man. Five receptions, 121 yards, that touchdown. On that sweet double move that had Tredavious White just looking, he got flagged and still <laughs> he got flagged. For, he got flagged for what was it holding or something, and he still couldn't stop JMO. And then of course Demo man, seventeen carries, ninety one yards, that touchdown, and him posing his will in that overtime period, man. It, that was the Demo show in that overtime period. It was just hand. We gonna hand the ball to this dude, man, and five gonna get it done on defense, man. I didn't even realize he had this many tackles. Alex, Alex Evans only had 13. Man, he was he was getting it. He was getting it out there. You, he just was like flying. So he had 13 tackles, three tackles for loss. Aiden Hutchinson was imposing his will as well, man. He didn't get to Stafford a lot. He got to him a couple of times. Of course, some of those holds. But that one sack, especially he just shut that last drive down. Just like, yeah, you ain't doing this today. Uh, one tackle for loss and four quarterback hits, man. He was definitely, definitely getting to Matthew Stafford. Uh, so those are my boss up players of the game. You know, they bossed up and balled out. Balled on. Got to be that secondary, man. I know they mm-hmm. played better than, you know, because, and especially in that first half, but that, they gave up 117 yards uh, and, a, and a touchdown to probably a guy who's going to go into the Hall of Fame, man. <laughs> I mean, Stafford is going to have all kind of passing records, man. And McVay and those guys, they shifted and moved and put guys in position. And then Cup being healthy, I mean, his footwork, that catch he had on the sidelines in front of, in front mm-hmm. of Arnold was ridiculous. Like, oh, you you have to be able to give people, you know, the credit where credit is due. And right. they just had, a, they just had a, a plan to get Cup open. Like, we're going to move him here, we're going to move him there. And all the preset motions told uh, Matthew Stafford, 
what kind of coverage he was facing. Is it going to be zone? Is it going to be man? If they're going to move, it's, it's man. If they don't move, it's zone. So and he just took advantage of that young secondary. But I think that the fact that one guy I got to give a shout out to, I know he loved this thing to this heart. Kirby just with that pick in the end zone. Call me dirty you want to. I'm a dirty pick this pass off from you. All right. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's our show for the day man it was a late night for us man i know uh we up this morning man five something getting this show out to you guys man but we want to make sure that you know we recap what we thought give you our thoughts and opinions man uh, up right here on the show uh, what we thought about the game man uh but like the video and share the video man make sure you check us out uh on all different type of platforms man um definitely let's look at you know you got to look at us man because we we everywhere man we on youtube man go check out wolf alliance sports talk youtube channel man he does his thing over there man you know he does some great shorts so go check him out too man coach jones all right man you check out ll man he does you know he be out there fishing grilling you know mm-hmm. he do all kind of stuff man of course thursday thursdays man you check me out man on tiktok and x and all those things man because i'll be putting some content out over there as well so Make sure you check us out. Now time for parting shots for today's show. I'm going to let the defense go first, man. What you got, Coach Jones? I just want to give a shout-out to Lee by Enrique again, man. He played. He was in there and played a majority of defensive snaps. He was in there loose. He played on the inside. He played on the outside. Uh, so the hype up about Levi being healthy was not was not just talk. It wasn't just like, you know, oh, yeah, it just sound good. To uh to you know from the from the coaches, but it actually showed on the field, and um I'm just that just <sighs> that that just was so good, man. Because his nickname was the Enforcer. My nickname in high school was the Enforcer. He came out wearing 75. I wore 75. It just yeah, man. Shout out to Levi and Enrique, man. Okay, man. You know. Coach mm-hmm. Jones getting a little nostalgic and, uh, you know, <laughs> this morning. All right, what you got, LL? Um, you know, shout out to y'all, man. Great uh, great uh, victory for us fans, I suppose. Um, on to Tampa Bay. Um, shout out to Kirby Joseph. Shout out to uh, David Montgomery. Um, have a great Monday. Y'all, it's the beginning of the week. Yeah, man. Thank you for tuning in right here in the Boston Baller Podcast on a victory Monday, man. And shout out to my boy, Sheriff Joe Bags over there at Ram Showcase, man. Uh, that's the guy I did the hanging with the ops episode. So shout out to him, man, because I uh, the Rams played tough and it was a lot closer game than I thought it was going to be. So uh, I got to give credit where credit is due. He said he he told me about Durant. Uh, that's the guy uh, who almost had that pick. He was telling me about some guys over there, and and they showed up. That 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 new linebacker core. They we might know who they are right now, but hey, you're gonna mess around and find out with those guys, man. But. Enjoy your work day. I know you guys are starting it out today, man, but make sure you do one thing for me. Well, two things. First thing, if you're having a good day, spread the joy because I know you have a good day, man, because it's Victory Monday. But if you ain't having a good day, don't steal no one else's joy. And whatever you're doing in life, get guys to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. For my man, LL Cool Torrance and Coach Mike Jones, this is Curtis and we will holler at you. Real sense.